do you think people are leaving behind in the crypto space? I think some people may have felt like the, the boat is sort of gone out to sea when you see Bitcoin going to the moon and that sort of thing. Uh, what are people leaving behind if they don't get in on this? If they don't get in on it, they're leaving behind at a top level the biggest revolution that we've seen in the internet um, and money and the mix of those two combined. Um, that we will ever see in our lifetimes. This is actually a revolution in technology and a new way of doing things. So it's not just an investment. It's actually a really broad reaching thing. And that's Bitcoin plus Ethereum and all the other parts of this digital asset network. But in terms of price, if we look at the previous cycles after they halved the supply of Bitcoin called the halving cycle, it happens every few years and it's predictable and forecastable, um, the price tends to go up 10, 20, 50 X. And it would suggest that the price still has maybe another 400% to go, maybe even more this year, right? There's no asset that looks like this. Sure, you can speculate in options and gaming stocks or whatever it may be, yeah. but nothing as a, as a trillion dollar asset class has this kind of upside. So that's the potential that's there. Um, so even if you think, well, what happens if it falls 50%? So you 50% is your downside and your upside is 400%. And you talked about in terms of changing money, is this a threat to the US dollar or will this remain sort of two different things in, in different universes? In a longer term, in a 20 year horizon, yes, it is a threat to the dollar. But, you know, nobody wants their dollar to go up and down 5% a day, which is what Bitcoin does. Yeah. It's not stable. It's a store of value. It's more like gold right now. Um, and its very existence caused the central banks, like the Federal Reserve, to set up their own versions of digital currencies. So it all starts slotting into this new digital world. So they understand that it's there, that people want to use it, people want to save in it, make investments, but they also want to make sure that, that it exists as part of the system that, that is already in place, because they want your taxes, obviously. Yeah. Now, as you as you say, I mean, as something is appreciating in value, why, why would I want to spend it, right? I might want to just hold on to it and let it to keep accumulating, right? Uh, so, so is there there's something probably out there coming in the next couple of years that we don't even uh, that, that we don't know about, or do you have your eye on maybe something something maybe uh, that's you know the Bitcoin of 2013 that might be used, or maybe the next big asset, or something that could actually be used as money? So, look, Bitcoin is one thing which might be the store of value that might turn to money. But there's a whole world of digital assets out there. And many people watching this have seen everything from these digital pieces of art called non-fungible tokens. One of those sold today for $69 million. That's one thing. There's platforms like Ethereum where people are building the future of the internet of value. These things have real value. There are also other protocols, tokens, platforms that let all of these different things speak to each other. Like you and I, I don't know what computer you're on. I don't know what internet provider you're on. And we don't care, right? Right. Because it's called interoperability. That whole layer is going to come too. So we're not worrying about Bitcoin. We won't want to invest in it. But if I want to send you money, I don't care how it happens. Or if you want to charge for this video and make it instantly streaming, it may happen over Ethereum, but nobody cares. You care because you get the money at the end of it. Right. So the, there is a huge world of this that's all coming. So, I, you know, I'm a big fan of Ethereum and I'm a big fan of a lot of these other projects. Problem is, is when you go further out on the risk curve, you don't know which ones are going to really survive and get the network effects. Yeah. Um, but Ethereum clearly has got the network effect. Bitcoin has. This whole space now is 1.7 trillion. If we compare it to the global equity market or global bond market, those are kind of three or four hundred trillion in size. So you can see how big this can actually get over the next you know, 10, 20 years. I've seen a, a prediction from you. Uh, I believe this was from a couple of months ago. Uh, Bitcoin could hit a million uh, by I think it was 2025. Are you still on that? Yeah, I mean, that's basically following the trend line, the logarithmic trend line that it's been following since its inception. So I'm not saying anything racy. It just sounds like a big number. Yeah. Um, but it would make sense. Now, we will have a big down cycle before we get there as well. And that's normal too. Those are some of the features of the Bitcoin um, price cycle. You know, it tends to explode up, it then comes down a lot, 
and then it starts building again. Um, and that next site should get to a million dollars, maybe more, who knows? Uh, a little bit of a side point here. You mentioned uh, uh, gaming stocks. I'm thinking particularly of GameStop. But just, just a quick thing. Is that, that seemed to be a sort of, I guess, democratization a little bit of investing of, of a bunch of little guys coming together. Is that sort of like what we're seeing in this digital revolution? Is that sort of in the same, the same frame, the same well, vein? What's amazing is imagine being able to own a share of the internet. Not Google, but the internet or a share of the monetary system. That's what this is. That's how democratizing it is. So it's not like you can own a, a stock and isn't, doesn't that make me feel free and liberated and democratized? <laughs> no, this is owning a stake of the future. It's so it's something much bigger. It's the most democratic investment I think we've ever had. And it's extraordinary because also people might go, but I can't afford to spend $50,000 on Bitcoin. Right. Magic is it goes down to eight decimal places. So you can put in 10 bucks and you can save 10 bucks every month, or you can save a thousand bucks every month, or you can buy a whole Bitcoin. So that makes it also democratic because shares, you can't do that. Fractional shares, they're coming. And you know, some of the platforms like Robin Hood have fractional shares, but this by definition is fractional. So it makes it affordable to even the poorest person. Is there a bubble in the stock market role? Yes and no. Yes, because the speculative activity is almost the highest on record, or if not the highest on record, above and beyond what we saw in 2000 in the dot-com bubble. So there's too many people buying options, too many people punting stocks that are valueless, hedge funds with too much exposure, mutual funds with too little cash, it's all in the market, everyone's all in. So is there the potential for this whole thing to have a sharp, nasty unwind? Mm -hmm. Yes. But over time, the stock market is reflecting something else, something much more important, which is the rise of central banks and their balance sheets, i.e. the printing of money. Many people talk about, well, it's inflationary, yet CPI doesn't go up a lot. Right. But people feel poorer. What's going on? Well, the magic is, is when you move away from using the US dollar as the denominator of something and use the central bank balance sheet where there's all this excessive supply. So if you divide the S&P 500, the same applies to many other things. The only thing it doesn't apply to is Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the only asset that has protected people from the loss of global purchasing power of fiat currencies that have been printed to excess. So that means that if the central banks continue, the price denominator makes it look like the market's rising. So for people who've seen that the Venezuelan stock market once went up, you know, thousands of percent. Yeah. But once you take it away from being in Venezuelan bolivars and put it in US dollars, it had gone down. Um, it's the same thing. It's what your denominator is. So that's so that is a bubble in central banking and not a bubble in the stock market. There is a short term bubble in the stock market.